Cool. So go ahead and come into a seat. And I want to see you guys. So, and once you feel comfortable, you can start to close down through the eyes and find length in your spine. And maybe the palms of the hands are facing down and the knees. Maybe you just sort of circle the shoulders just gently to let go of some tension there. Maybe you can release the pelvic floor area so the belly begins to sort of flotate out like a baby's belly. And you can breathe all the way down to the base of the spine. And then just start to become aware of the areas that you might be holding tension this morning. So these different areas can be physical, they can be emotional, they can be mental, but we're, regardless of wherever you're carrying tension, allow it to inform your practice today. So there's a lot going on right now, no matter what angle you look at it, but the theme that I've kind of been finding in my practice and in just in my life is how can you nourish yourself? How can you nurture your body, your energy, and whatever you need to do to alter this practice to make it fit your body and your energetic needs, then feel free to do that. So this is about you and Ultimately, I want you to be able to recognize that you are your greatest teacher, no matter what. So you can take things more or less than me. And just notice the muscles of the face. See if you can relax the tongue from the base of the tongue all the way to the tip of the tongue. Maybe you soften the tongue away from the roof of the mouth and you create some space in between your back teeth. And feel the muscles around the lips relaxing, the cheekbones sort of drawing away and down the face. And relax the space behind the eyes, the eyelids, the brow, the forehead. But at the same time, imagine having a string from the crown of your head up towards the ceiling so you can feel almost an extension and a lifting out of the crown of the head. So the spine is strong and stacked and slightly engaged, but also relaxed. So in yoga, we have the yoga sutras and yoga should be a balance of effort and ease. So it's not too much ease or it's not too much effort. It's where can you find that space that's right in between? So it's called Sukham and Stira. Yoga, Sukham, Stiram, Asanam. Yoga is the balance of effort and ease. And then from this space of balance, see if you can just observe your breath today. And just kind of put yourself in the back of your mind as this observer. So you're observing the patterns of the body right now. You're noticing where the breath comes into the body and how the body is feeling. So with the breath, you might just notice if it's shallow, if it's more just coming in towards the rib cage, or maybe your breath is deeper, maybe it can wander down towards the navel. And then notice the speed of the breath. Notice if it's fast, or maybe it's a little bit slower today. And then maybe the next thing you notice is if the inhale is the same length as the exhale. And if it's not, maybe now you can start to just slightly manipulate that. So the inhale becomes the same amount as the exhale. So maybe you can count here to even that out. Maybe I counted four, four seconds in and four seconds out.
And let's just begin by doing some breath work. So take your right hand and your two piece fingers place in between your eyebrows, in between the third eye center. And this is Nadi Shodhana. So we've done this before. If you're new to it, I'll guide you the first round. The right thumb will plug the right nostril. And one round is breathing in through the left nostril, plugging the left nostril, breathing out through the right nostril, breathing back in through the right nostril, and then breathing out through the left nostril. So that's one time. We'll do this three times. I'll guide the first round. So breathe in, try to concentrate the peak of the inhale, the space where your two piece fingers are touching the third eye. Plug the left nostril and exhale slowly through the right nostril. This is an erase. Inhale through the right nostril. And then once more, peaking the awareness with the peak of the breath. Plug the right nostril and exhale out through the left nostril. And just do that two more times on your own. done just release the right hand back to the leg and just once more observing the breath observing all of the different sensations how you're breathing where you're breathing <laughs> and then start to bring your hands towards your heart center palms pressed together and from this space just maybe tuning into the sensation of the heart lifting with the breath in maybe you can feel that on the thumbs and then the heart dropping on the breath out and then if you would like to dedicate your practice to something or someone or set an intention for your practice then Go ahead and use this space now to just allow it to arise naturally. Whatever brought you to the mat today, just make it a short, positive affirmation. And repeat it to yourself a few times, like a little mantra, just drumming away on the inside of your mind, sort of reinforcing that intention on a cellular level. So the intelligence of the 50 trillion cells in your body, it becomes clear that this is why you are moving today. This is what you are cultivating energy for. And then visualize a dandelion flower. So like the little palm where you can blow it and make a wish and take a breath in. And as you exhale, visualize blowing out these little seeds of intention into the world around you and just let go of it and trust that it's already been set. Everything is working to see that into reality. And then on the next inhale, you can start to gently blink the eyes open and start to reach the fingers up towards the ceiling and Maybe the gaze lifts too. Maybe you can drop the head back and just sort of move through the fingertips. And then as you exhale, slowly release the hands forward and down all the way to the ground and try to keep the movement with the breath. And then you can walk the hands forward and you want to be comfortable here. So if you can go deeper, then feel free to. So it might be if you're tighter in the hips that your hands are just here. Maybe you can drop down to the forearms. Or maybe your chin can sort of draw in towards the chest and you can walk the hands a little further ahead of you. Just 
find a space where you can soften a little bit. And you might feel this in the outside of the hips. And then we'll start to move a little bit here. So start to just sort of sway through the spine, starting from the tailbone all the way up, like a little rippling through the spine. And then maybe you start walking the hands towards the right knee and you start just gently opening up through the left side of the body and then circle the hands over in front of the left knee and sort of gently start opening. And then the next time you circle, release the one hand by the hip and then reach up towards the corner of the room. So you find a lateral bend here. And so, depending on the side that you're on, you're gonna anchor the sit bone that's opposite from the direction that you're reaching. So you can connect to this long line of energy all the way through the side body and try to stay long in the back of the neck. So try to keep the gaze swiveled up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, start to release the hand down to the ground and circle over all the way to the other side. Maybe you can move the shoulder and you can move the fingers and you can still breathe to the belly. And then we'll just do that one more time. So circle all the way to the right, lengthen through the left fingers. And this time circle that top hand down and behind you. So both fingertips are facing behind you. Lift the heart up towards the ceiling so you can feel this front of your chest starting to stretch and maybe the back of the head can drop back. Maybe you can just gently move from side to side if it's comfortable for you. If this is uncomfortable in the neck, you can continue gazing forward at the horizon. And one of the best ways to know if your body is in a comfortable space is the breath. If it gets short and shallow, then just how can you soften? And then take the gaze forward. And you can place the left hand to your side and depending which side you're on. So the opposite from what we just did. And then see, check in with those points so that your shoulder can move, your fingers can move, the jaw is not clenched, the belly can breathe. These are the points of conscious and unconscious control, the gates of consciousness. And then release the top hand down and circle back towards the center to pause for a moment. So maybe you're still moving from side to side and you're welcoming a little bit of fluidity into the practice. Just allow the body to take you where it wants to go. This is a relationship of trust that the body has its own intelligence. And then we'll just do that one more time, but this time go to start with the opposite side. So the side we just kind of stretched through, return there. And then really reach through the fingers, circle the shoulder, and reach that top hand back and behind you and just come back with the fingertips facing behind you. So the palms of the hands are behind the hips. You can drop the head back. Maybe sway from side to side. And then take the gaze forward and we'll just go to the other side. Check in with the shoulder, the fingers, and I really like to just imagine when I'm practicing like I'm in a body of water. I can feel this buoyancy and ease to my movements, like I'm bobbing in the ocean. And then release the top hand down and to the ground. And then see if you can just roll over the knees and come to a tabletop. If there's a more comfortable way for you to get there, then feel free to sort of walk the legs around. So then we're in a tabletop, the hands are under the shoulders and the knees are under the hips. And you can drop the belly and lift the gaze and as you exhale, round the spine. And then maybe on the same exhale, you can sink the sit bones back and come into a variation of a child's pose. And then on the inhale breath, drop the belly and pull up towards the cow pose. And then as you exhale around the spine, sink back to a child's pose. And then from here, I'd like you to just take the liberty to move how you would like. So that might mean circling through multiple postures, or it might just mean moving forward and back in the spine. 
maybe you can start to stretch through one side of the body, drop the belly down and around to the other side and then back and up. So you're sort of creating a barrel roll through the spine, through the torso of the body. And then if you've done that, just make sure you take it in the other direction too. So it's like you're churning through the belly, through the sides of the body, forward and back in the spine. And we have eight primary movements in our spine. We can flexion forward, we can extend back, we can laterally bend, we can twist, and we can lengthen and contract. So when we move in yoga synergy to find fluidity, the goal is to try to find balance in our spine through all directions. And then maybe you face the fingers towards the opposite sides of the mat so you can just sway from side to side through the wrist. And then if it's okay for you, maybe the fingers can go back towards the tops of the knees. And maybe you have one hand regular and then one hand facing back so you can shift the weight forward and back, tensioning the back of the wrist and then the front of the wrist. Maybe they both face back, but keep in mind, this can be quite intense for the wrists. So only do if your body is inviting you and then just alternate through those sides. And then once you feel pretty balanced, place both hands on the ground and start to walk the hands forward about one palm distance. Tuck the toes under and start to extend the legs one at a time. So you're coming into your first Adho Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. You can pedal through the heels. You can bend one knee and sort of alternate this movement here. And just see that you can still press into the mound knuckle of the index finger. So you're almost gripping with your hands and that movement comes up to the shoulders so you're not collapsing in the shoulders. And then maybe you find stillness, maybe you settle the gaze at one point in between the toes, the heels, wherever they are. Just feel the back of the neck long. Maybe you can even notice your rib cage. Notice if the rib cage is flaring out. See if you can just draw the lower ribs in towards the spine to lengthen through the upper back as well. And then with an inhale, start to tiptoe the feet to the top of the mat. Notice at what point the spine wants to engage and sort of start to move with the feet until you come to a forward fold. The feet are about hip width distance apart and you can soften the top of the head down. So bend your knees as much as you need to here. This is never about locking the legs straight. And then you can just stay here in stillness or you can maybe grab opposite elbows and find a little bit of a rag doll. You can move from side to side, opening the chest and then rolling the belly back towards the tops of the legs and then to the other side as well. And then you can shake the head like you're saying no to someone or yes or maybe in a circle, <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then release the hands down towards the ground. And as you inhale, find a halfway lift. So maybe the hands come under the knees and try to broaden across the front of the chest and then fold forward, exhale. You can micro bend the knees when you fold. And then start to step firmly through the heels of the foot and start to roll the spine up. Move really slowly. So you can just feel the weight of the head and the shoulders. And at what point each vertebra starts to engage and stack over the last one. And when the shoulders want to draw in and up and then the head is the last thing to stack and you come to a standing. So find this stance where your feet are about hip width distance and you're softer behind the knees. And See so that you can sort of like relax the body down. So the top of the hips are sort of moving backwards and then lengthen the elbows to the sides and have the fingertips just sort of gently away from one another. And this is 
Yell is, I know this is your first yoga synergy practice. This is one of the common stances that we come to. So from this space, maybe you close the eyes for a moment and just start to create an infinity sign with the tip of the nose. So you can feel the top of the head where it connects with that point on the spine where we have this movement, this axis point. And this feeling into being upright, being on your two feet. And blink the eyes open if they were closed and start to drop the chin down towards the chest. So you're lengthening through the back of the neck and then roll your left ear towards the left shoulder and then circle the chin back towards the chest and roll the right ear towards the right shoulder, just gently feeling through the side of the neck. And then you can just sort of oscillate there back and forth, one ear and then the other, but be mindful because this is a delicate part of the spine. And then if you're feeling okay, maybe the next time the left ear reaches the left shoulder, the head can start to roll back and you can find a complete circle. So the right ear rolls around and then the chin rolls around and you're just feeling the weight of your head rolling over this point. And then the next time your chin meets your chest, just reverse that movement. Maybe you can even notice that holding the arms like this can start to develop some tension. So you can always lower the hands down to whatever point you feel comfortable, like you can hold this without tension. And then the next time your chin rolls forward, just take the gaze back onto the horizon. Maybe you start to move the fingers, see that they are buoyant like the tendrils of a jellyfish. You can start to circle the shoulders up and down and then down and away. And then maybe you can sort of scoop the front of the hips. And then maybe you can blotate your belly like the way we're told not to in society and just move all of these different parts of the body at once the neck included. And then the next time you exhale, start to slowly reach the hands down and back. And then circle the palms to face forward, lift across the front of the chest and reach back behind you with the fingertips. So point them back and really press through the palms here. And then as you exhale, circle the hands forward, try to move one finger at a time and then flex the backs of the wrists. So you feel the skin behind the heart really starting to stretch here like the shoulder blades are just drawing away from one another and try to continue pressing the sit bones forward so that's the point where the thighs kind of meet the pelvis and then reach the belly up towards the ceiling so you can really feel the whole spine rounding forward and then as you inhale start to slowly lift the heart reach back behind you Press the palms out, but see that your neck can move. See that it's not locked. Maybe you can swallow. And then the next time you breathe in, start to circle the hands forward, draw the backs of the palms to touch. So you can feel the shoulders starting to roll forward. And as you inhale, start to reach the fingers up towards the ceiling until the fingers start to naturally unfold so the palms of the hands press together. And then you can gaze up towards the ceiling and see that you can still move through the fingers. Maybe you can circle the shoulders again. And then as you exhale, open the arms out to the side and let's just circle the hands around so the backs of the palms meet again. And let's just do that a few times. Inhale, at what point does your gaze want to lift? Exhale the hands to the sides and down. And you can find some just flow state here. So you don't need to follow my pace. You can find your own rhythm. Move with your breath. Breathe in, open the front and back side of the body. And then the next time your hands meet overhead, 
just keep them extended up towards the ceiling. And maybe you lift the gaze and allow the head to really drop back and then gaze on the horizon. And you can stay here with the feet on the ground or maybe you can just press up to the toe tips and then press the heels down towards the ground. And you can just continue creating tension and then releasing that tension. And then you have the option to just go as far as you want to go, but maybe you start to bend the knees. <laughs> I fell out of it. So keep it at your own pace and know that these are all optional. We're creating tension and we're releasing it. We're seeing where our body wants to go still. Good, and then come back to center and start to reach the hands forward and down. And as you inhale, open the arms out to the side. And then maybe you can come up onto the toes here and see that your neck can still move. Maybe you bend your knees. But if you feel pain in the knees, then don't do this. <laughs> And then start to circle the hands down and around so the backs of the wrists are flexed. You can sort of make these little fists with your hands. And you can maybe lengthen one side and then lengthen the other. So the whole back, the upper back is stretching. And then you can come down as far as you want to and then release. So the goal is you want to still have control over the movement. And then inhale the hands around so the backs of the hands meet and reach up overhead and slowly start to exhale the hands forward and bring one elbow up towards the ceiling so it helps to just mirror me and you start to open the hands and then start to shift to one side so you're really stretching through the side of the body you can come to the opposite toe tip and really press the fingers away from one another here and say that your jaw is relaxed. And circle this bottom hand down and around and up. And we'll just do that on the other side. So bring the top elbow to the ceiling, fingertips apart, open the fingers and then shift the weight. Shoulders draw apart from one another here. Breathe to the belly. And then circle the bottom hand down and around and up. And as you exhale, reach the hands forward and start to twist from the navel all the way up so the arms want to engage and continue to look forward. Keep your hips squaring to the front and just really draw the shoulders apart, press through the palms of the hands here. Maybe the shoulders can circle. And then hug the bottom hand in and around. And as you open up, start to draw the elbows back behind, open across the chest, and then reach the hands down and to the other side. So keep the hips squaring forward and look forward and try to lengthen through the side of the neck. Maybe the shoulders can move. Maybe you can press out through the palms. So this is a spinal twist. And then draw the back hand in and around. And this time, draw the elbows back like we just did. Open across the front of the chest, press the hands down and round the spine forward and up. Hands reach forward. And we'll just do that one more time. And if you want to take it deeper, you can always lift one leg and then release it. But everything is an option. And then to the other side. And again, you can lift a leg and release down and up. And try to move from the core. And then twisting to the other side. And this time, maybe you spiral all the way around yourself like a tornado. So the back heel might lift. And then hug the bottom hand in and around. And this time, we'll open up to the ceiling and to the sides. Circle the hands around and twist to the other side. So hug the hands all the way around yourself. Maybe you can even incorporate the eyes into the twist. 
and hug the bottom hand in and around. Inhale the hands up towards the ceiling, down to the ground and up. Cool. And then let's find this movement in the hands. So let's make it really small and allow the fingers to fold in and open up one at a time. And just allow it to be a really soft movement. See where you can let go of tension in the hands. And then let's allow this movement to start to get a little bit bigger. So maybe this figure eight spiral starts to expand more and more with every round that you do it. And just notice how your legs and your spine want to engage, but try to start the movement with the fingers and then allow it to ripple up through the arms. And then start to come to one toe, then the knee. And we'll move over the leg that's bent. And then the next time you fold forward, maybe you start to hug that knee in towards the chest and you find the stance in the arms. So the elbows are to the side, you're buoyant in the shoulders. And then press the toe down with a straightened leg, open across the heart and lift the foot. Only lift it as high as you need. You can flex the toes, bend the knee, and then place the foot back on the ground and just reconnect to this movement here the spiraling and folding action in the spine. And then you start to come to the other toe and the movement goes over the other leg. And the next time you fold forward, you can draw the knee in towards the chest. Still breathe to the belly. So it's like the spine is rounding over this leg and release the toe to the ground, open the heart. And from the inside seam of the leg, you can lift. And some of these movements, like I said, they're easiest to follow with your eyes. And so just fall into this flow state of moving the body. And then start to come to the other toe again. Start to hug the knee in towards the chest and step it back behind you. So it's like you come into warrior two legs, but continue with this spiraling movement. So you're bending through both knees. The hips are moving as deep as they want to. And just allow yourself to flow here. Connect to the state of oneness with your body. And then the next time you come forward, lightly swivel onto the back toes. So you're in more of a crescent warrior, but we're continuing to move here. So we're straightening and bending the legs while still moving over the body in this fluid movement. You can widen the stance for stability. And the next time you sort of come forward, come to about 45 degrees over the legs and step forward to the toes and just continue flowing over the bent knee. And then start to lift that bent knee from the ground and step the toes behind you. So you're sort of twisted here. Press the inner thighs together and then allow the knees and the hips to bend. So you're trying to square the hips forward, but you're active in the inner seam of the thighs. So you feel this a little bit more on the outside of the hips.
And then the next time you come forward, start to draw that knee in towards the chest. And you can always just stay on the toe tips or you can bring the fingers apart with the elbows to the side. And maybe you lift up on the toes and then place both feet back onto the ground, like a push up for the arch of the foot. And just come back into this sort of neutral flow state. I'll call it like Tadasana, but moving. <laughs> And then start to come to the other foot. And just embracing how your body is moving today, how your body is breathing today, and what a gift it is. And draw that knee in towards the chest and then actively step it back behind you and straight away come into this movement. So you're opening through the hips. The legs are starting to warm up and engage. And the next time you come forward, shift the weight and gently come back onto the toes. So you come into this crescent movement. And the most important thing about the breath is that it's through the nose. So just see that you can make your breath in nasal breathing if you're breathing through the mouth. But allow it to be natural. Notice how these positions breathe your body for you. And the next time you come forward, Step the back foot up to the toes. And then step that foot to the side and try to square the hips forward and then come into this movement again. And then start to draw that knee in and up. You can always stay on the toes. And what helps with the balance is staying buoyant in the standing leg. So don't lock the knee. And maybe the elbows come to the sides and the fingers almost touch. You can press up and then release down. And just sort of sway the weight from foot to foot. And then inhale, open the chest. And as you exhale, circle the hands around and reach up towards the ceiling. And then let's move really slowly here. Start to press the hands forward so you feel the shoulders coming apart so that your neck can still move. And then reach back up towards the ceiling. And let's just move like that a few times. How slow can you make this movement? And the palms of the hands are kind of like energy receptors. So maybe you can even imagine that you're cultivating prana, life force, chi from the air as you move. And reach the hands up and start to reach to the left or the right, whichever side. And see that your jaw is relaxed. And when you reach up, try to unravel the fingers one at a time. And we'll just do that on the other side too. And then come up through the center. And we'll start to fold forward, start to round the spine completely forward. So don't move the legs yet. 
And then once you feel like you can't round your spine anymore, bend the knees and plant the hands on the ground. And then start to straighten through the legs until you find that forward fold that feels good to you, that Uttanasana. And then breathe in and find a halfway lift. Gaze is forward. Exhale, fold forward again. Find Uttanasana. And plant the hands onto the ground and start to lift the left foot away from the earth. And you can roll through the ankle here. So we're in like a modified standing split and flex through that foot. Release the foot down. So you're in warrior one leg, so the back foot is about 45 degrees here. And you really want to be able to press into the pinky toe edge of the foot and see that you can round your spine over this front thigh. So it's like you can draw the forehead towards the knee and the belly button is not touching the thigh. And as you breathe in, reach to the sides and up overhead. Exhale, the fingers back down towards the earth. And we'll just do that a couple more times. Breathe in, reach to the sides. At the peak of the inhale, the palms touch. And then exhale, fold forward. And one more time to stay. Inhale, the hands to the sides and up overhead. If you can, bring the palms to touch. Reach up through the fingers and feel the shoulders drawing up towards the ceiling. And if it's okay for your neck, you can drop the head back and lift the gaze. Try to stay lifted across the front of the body without compressing the back side of the body. You can always keep the gaze forward. And then start to reach forward, start to spin on that back heel and come straight away into this movement that we've been finding. And the next time the hands come up, start to slowly reach them to the side of the bent knee. And then reach the opposite arm up. So you're reaching through the fingers and you can maybe stay buoyant in the hips. And then circle that bottom hand around and up. And start to reach the fingers forward. So you can move through the fingers. Palms are kind of facing inward. And then spin the back heel to the ground. So you have warrior two feet here. And then as if you were the archer pulling a bow, pull this left hand back behind you and come into your warrior two. So stay buoyant in the shoulders, in the hips. See that your belly can breathe. Relax the jaw. Maybe move the fingers more. So this warrior two just becomes a little bit more fluid. Veer of Adrasana was a great warrior. And in these postures, we're embodying that archetypal energy. Take a breath in and start to reach forward. Cartwheel the hands down slowly to frame the front foot. Spin onto the back heel and press back to a plank. So from this plank, you have the option to keep the knees lifted or you can drop the knees on the tops of the feet. If the feet are on the ground, try to round the spine forward and everybody looks lower down to the belly. So bend the knees, hug the elbows in towards the side. And then let's come through some baby cobras. So the hands are just under the shoulders. And as you breathe in, press to the tops of the feet and lift the heart. So the back of the neck is still long. And then exhale, fold forward. And let's do that two more times. Breathe in, lift the heart from the ground. Exhale, lower down. And then one more time, inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Press through the hands, come through tabletop, tuck the toes, and into Adho Mukha Svanasana. And just use this downward facing dog to connect with your breath, to connect with the body. What sensations do you feel on the surface of your skin? Is it heat? Is it sweat? Is it your clothes?
And then look to the space in between your hands and step or hop to the top of the mat. Straight away, come into a halfway lift and then fold forward as you exhale. So you can stay buoyant in the knees. And then we'll just come onto the other side. So this time we'll lift our right foot up away from the ground. You can roll through the ankle in one direction and then the other. And then flex through the foot and release the foot down towards the ground. So you have warrior one legs. And then create this sensation of rounding over this front thigh. So almost touching the forehead to the knee and the belly draws in towards the spine. And really root down through the feet like you're trying to tear the mat in half. Reach the hands to the sides, breathe in, the hands meet overhead. And then exhale, reach to the sides and down. And we'll do that a couple more times. Inhale to the sides and up. Exhale to the sides and down. And one more time to stay. Inhale the hands up. Maybe the palms can touch. Maybe the arms are just shoulder distance. It's up to you. Maybe the gaze is lifted or maybe the gaze is forward. Just find a space where you can find the stira and the sukha, the effort and the ease. And try to still breathe down to the belly. Notice if the breath is shallow. And if it is, where can you soften? And then take the gaze forward, start to reach forward, spin on the back heel, and straight away come into this movement. This gentle fluidity compared to the stillness that we just found. And then the next time the hands reach up, slowly start to reach the hands to the side of this bent leg and reach the opposite arm up to the ceiling. Reach through both fingers so the shoulders draw apart. You can stay buoyant in the back knee and circle that hand down, around and up. And start to reach the fingers forward. Spin the back heel down and open to warrior two. So the palms are facing down and the feet are perpendicular. So the back foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. And then maybe you can spin the palms to face up towards the ceiling. Try to even circle the pinky finger around even more so you can feel this more through the front of the shoulders and the chest. This is the meridian that runs for the heart across our wingspan and then circle the palms to face back down. Move through the circle or circles of the shoulders, the fingers, the jaw, the belly. And then start to reach forward and down, cartwheel the hands, spin on the back toes and step to a plank. And we'll lower all the way to our bellies again. So you can drop the knees or not, but lower with control and integrity in the spine. And then reach the fingers back behind you with the palms facing down. And we'll come up into Shalavasana, which is a locust posture. As you breathe in, lift the toes, the hands, the heart. And as you exhale, lower down. And we'll just do that twice more. Breathe in to lift. Exhale to lower. And one more time. Breathe in, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Bring the hands under the shoulders. Press through a tabletop. Tuck the toes and come into your Adha Mukha. And just take about three breaths here. Try to find that Sama Vritti breathing, that even inhale and even exhale. And then look to the space in between your hands and make your way to the top. So however you want to get there, come into a halfway lift and then fold forward, exhale. And then as you breathe in, reach the fingers to the sides and up overhead. 
can just exhale the hands forward and we'll find some movement here. So we're gonna do some standing balances today, which we haven't really done. So I'll give lots of options to take it as far as you want to take it. So you want your feet to be about hip width distance apart. And you can come to the toes. So we'll move over this leg in a way that we've done before. And then you can hug the knee into the chest. And this time you can bring the hands to the knee and start to draw it in a little bit closer to the chest. So this is your option one. You can stay here. If you have the flexibility, then you can bring your hands to the heels and you can start to straighten through the leg. And then come back. And then start to open the knee to the side reach the hands down and find this sort of twisting in the hands. So you can stay here, twisting and bending towards the lateral side of the left body, or you can grab the heel of the foot and straighten it if the flexibility and strength is there. And then start to release down and start to draw the heel back behind you and reach for your foot with the same arm and just reach up and just draw the heel in towards the glute. If you can have the fingers down so you feel this external rotation of the shoulder. If not, just hold the heel. Take a breath here and then draw the knee back into chest and twist the arms so the opposite hand from the leg is reaching back. And you can stay here or you can straighten the leg and twist over the leg. And then just hug the top arm in and around and release that foot down. Feel the relief that comes just sort of swaying from side to side. And let's do that on the other side. So when you're ready, just find this movement up. And then come to the toes. And then you can hug this knee in towards the chest. Maybe your hands find the knee and draw the knee in a little closer. So you have the option to stay here and just settle your gaze on the ground on one point where you can bring your hands down and start to straighten through the leg. And if you lose your balance, just come back to it. And then with control, start to bend the leg, reach the hands to the sides and find this twist in the arm. So you're bending through the side of the body here. Maybe the hand finds the heel of the foot and you can straighten the leg so it's a twist and a lateral bend. And then with control, start to release the foot back behind you spin through the arms and reach for the back foot with the same arm, so the same side of the body. If you can, spin the fingers forward so you're finding that rotation of the shoulder. If not, just hold the foot. And then with control, release the foot, draw the knee forward and start to twist the arm. So now the top arm is the same side of the leg. You can stay here or you can straighten the leg and twist over the leg. And then you release it with control. Find the twist, hug the arm in and around and release the foot with control and just feel the stability of your two feet, the strength that comes from the ground upwards. And we'll just move for a little bit here. And then the next time you start to reach up towards the ceiling, start to round the spine forward. And as soon as the spine can't round anymore, bend the knees 
release the hands to the ground and straighten through the backs of the legs for Uttanasana. Inhale to find a halfway lift. Exhale to step back to a downward facing dog. And just take a few breaths here. And as you inhale, start to bend the knees and release them towards the ground. Come to a tabletop and keep the toes tucked. Send the sit bones back towards the heels. So it's a child's pose, but with a little added stretch through the bottoms of the feet. And just settle through the breath here. And try to walk your fingers forward so you really feel this engagement in the shoulders up towards the ears. And then look to the space in between your hands and try to keep your belly as low to the ground as you can. Pull the belly forward and come into a baby cobra. And you roll to the tops of the feet. And then exhale up to a tabletop and back to a child's pose, but with the tops of the feet on the ground. And let's just do that one more time. So really walk the fingers forward and then gaze forward at the fingers and try to keep the chest as low to the ground as you can, like you're a snake inching forward. Come to cobra, elbows draw in towards the midline of the body, and then exhale back to child pose all the way. And then now really allow yourself to get heavy here. So maybe you can reach back towards the feet. You can grab the bottoms of the feet and curl up into a tiny little ball. In child's pose, the mythology behind this posture is that you are a little baby Shiva who just entered the world with curiosity and greatness ahead of you. And just allow the breath to settle. Try to release any sort of tension that's coming from the practice that we just had and really surrender the weight of your body down to the ground. Start to extend the fingers forward again. Inhale, come up through a tabletop and then tuck the toes and come into a downward facing dog. And start to tiptoe your feet towards your hands. Maybe you can cross at the ankles. Maybe you can press into the hands and lift the feet from the ground and hold for lalasana and then release down. That's hard, but it's fun to try hard things. <laughs> and then extend the legs out in front of you. And let's just find this pattern with the arms again. Folding over the legs and then reaching back up towards the ceiling. And then start to fold forward, but allow the arms to continue in this pattern until you find yourself in Paschimottanasana. So your hands can come to the outside of the pinky toe and you can keep a bend in the knee as much as you need to here, but you want this connection of forehead to knee. So bend your knees however much you need to to find that connection. If they can be straight while you maintain it, then that's cool. And we'll just take a few breaths here. Slowing down the practice. Forward folds are very soothing to our nervous system. And then start to release the hands and reconnect to this pattern of lifting up and folding forward. Welcoming movement back into the spine. 
And start to reach forward and then start to bend the elbows and come back onto the elbows and lift the feet up towards the ceiling if you can. And just roll through the feet, roll through the wrists, roll through the nose. Feeling this movement pass through the body and where you feel the movement, like the one that starts with the hips, I'm sorry, the one that starts with the feet, maybe you can even feel it in your hips. So as you roll the feet closed and open, do you feel the ball socket of the hip rolling in all directions for balance? And start to hug the right knee in and release the left heel to the ground and hug the spent knee with the opposite arm and circle this hand up and around and back behind you. Gaze is back over the shoulder. So for me, it's my right shoulder. It might be different for you. I'm just feeling a little twist in the spine from the tailbone all the way up to the crown of the head. The neck is included in that twist. Maybe the eyes, find the corner of the eyes as the drishti. And to leave this posture, look forward, unravel the neck, and then unravel the spine. Come back to the elbows and send the feet up towards the ceiling. And then hug the other knee in, release the heel down, opposite hand to knee, circle the back hand up and around so you're rolling through the shoulder and then placing the palm down behind you and gazing back as well and the leg that's extended straight in front of you notice if you can still flex the toes back to your face if it's a tendency to just relax the body see if you can find a little bit of engagement connect to the intelligence of every cell in your body so it's a balance of awareness of the posture and awareness of the breath. And to unravel the spine, take the gaze forward, unravel the spine and come back onto the forearms, send the feet up towards the ceiling and then drop the feet to the side so you're opening through the hips and still stay soft through the neck and then draw the feet up to touch. Bring one hand behind one knee, and so the forearm is behind the knee, and see if you can just sort of squeeze the heel back in. This is a release for the knee. And then just extend that leg and release the elbow back, and do that on the other side. So you're squeezing the heel of your foot towards the glute and flexing through the top of the knee that can release tension or pain. And then see if you can balance and do it on both at the same time. See if you can move the fingers and engage the chest to lift up. <laughs> and then maybe you come back onto the elbows and drop the hips to the sides and then start to bring the soles of the feet to touch. And then press up to the hands. So we're using the control of our muscles and our body is not our hands. And lift the heart, drop the head back, similar to how we started the class. And then as you exhale, draw the top of the head to the inside of the feet or just towards the inside of the feet. Maybe the hands move forward and grab the feet. Maybe along the way you start to give the arch of the foot a little massage and you round the spine forward in Baddha Konasana. So this is for the inside of the hips, of the groin. And on your next inhale, start to straighten the arms, lift the spine upright, gaze forward. And just look down at your feet and we're gonna take our left knee and we're just going to switch our legs. So the knee comes to the sole of the foot and the legs are kind of mirroring one another. Bring the left hand to the right knee and place the right hand down behind you and just twist and look back over the right shoulder. And you might feel this a little bit more through the outer part of the left hip. And 
And just release the hands and draw the right hand to the left knee and the left hand behind you. So we're twisting in the opposite direction now. And this might feel like a different sensation in the hips. And then look forward and just reverse the feet. So we're just trying not to use our hands, just switching that movement. And then bring the right hand to the left knee and place the left hand behind you. Look back over the left shoulder. Just notice where you feel this in the hips. And then twisting from the core, bring the left hand to the right knee and the right hand behind you. Look back over the right shoulder. And then unravel the spine, bring the hands to the heart and just come into a cross-legged seat really quickly. So we'll end with a little movement. So I find it best if you just watch and follow the movement with your eyes and then we can make our way into our Shavasana. So start to reach the fingers up towards the ceiling and then follow. And see if you can feel any sort of electrical energy. Maybe you can close the eyes here. Do you feel a pulsing heat like sensation in between the palms of the hands? Maybe you can bring the hands further away from one another. And at what point do you lose that connection? Or can you still feel this almost magnetizing energy jumping between the hands, this cultivation? that you've created today. And then as you inhale, start to reach the hands forward like you're sending that energy through the screen and the palms of the hands reach up towards the ceiling, the whole spine is lengthened. Enjoy or just listen. And then bring the hands to the knees and just for a moment, feeling the sensations inside of the body. And keeping the gaze soft or the eyes closed. Start to extend the legs out in front of you and lower down to your back. You can Start to rub the palms of the hands together and just create some friction and some heat. All of this energy that you've built and then just rub your face, rub the chest. Maybe you leave the hands on the body 
and feel the sensations of your breath moving through you, the little constants that we have from birth to death. The breath will always be with you as long as you are alive. Your heartbeat will always be with you as long as you're alive. And just tuning your awareness into this intelligence of your body. The notion that you don't have to think to have your heart beat, it will just do it. Your body has so many ways of supporting you and guiding you through this life. And just take a moment to feel a little bit of gratitude for this, this physical vessel that you inhabit. That allows you to move and breathe, navigate life. And then when, you, when you're ready, if you want to stay there, you can. You can just open the hands to the sides with the palms facing up. The eyes are still closed and check in with the feet. See that you can relax and soften the toes. Check in with the fingers. See that you can soften all of the fingers. And then see if you can just release the belly, the pelvic floor, and allow the breath to really move deeply into the torso and then unclench the jaw, relax the tongue. Relax the eyes and the forehead and just surrender everything in the body to the support of the earth for your Shavasana. And to bring the awareness back to the body, just position yourself in your mind's eye as an observer overhead. Visualize yourself lying on the floor and try to really see the clothes that you're wearing, the position of your body in the room that you're practicing in. And just seeing yourself through your own perception, but beyond the scope of your body. And then start to welcome your awareness back to the physical aspect of your body by moving the fingers and the toes, first in small movements and then in bigger movements. And place each sole of the foot on the ground one at a time. So you can feel your whole spine lengthen beneath you. And then when you're ready, you can roll off to one side using the bottom arm as a pillow and finding a fetal posture. In Shavasana, we practice death. We practice the end of something. And then there's always the beginning after an end. So we roll over and we return to the new beginning, the fetal posture. We practice beginnings here. And then keep your gaze soft and just press up to a seat. Try to keep the eyes closed and just return to this long spine where we started our practice in a cross-legged seat. And just notice the breath. Check in with yourself and observe what has shifted and what has changed over the past 75 minutes. And 
and start to bring the hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. And just remind yourself of any intention or dedication that you had at the start of the practice. And check in with it to see if that's something that you feel like you've honored. Or maybe it's something that you are ready to let go of. Maybe it's something you want to carry with you into the day ahead of you, the week ahead of you, the lunar cycle ahead of you. This is the time to set intentions now. I'm just taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And let's finish with the sound of Om. You can just join or you can listen. Exhale it out. Inhale deeply to chant. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste. So thank you guys. I really enjoy teaching these classes. Thank you for joining me on International Yoga Day. <laughs> um, and y'all can unmute yourself if you want. I'm going to stop recording. And, and music. Cool. Y'all feel okay? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Liz, what did you think of yoga's energy? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's very light. You're doing like a dance. It's different. Yeah. It's, cool. yeah. it's really different. When I first started learning it, I mean, you learn about your body to to see your body moving. It's a completely different way. It's completely different looking. Yeah, it's very far from rigid asana and like the training that Anne-Marie and I did with Simon, like it was like a month long and the first week was just like unlearning all of this stuff, all yeah. of these notions that I thought yoga was. And like, it's really beautiful to kind of change your perception with an open mind to just a different way of doing something that you'd been doing for a while already. But I love, I love, your, love your way of teaching. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy that you're here. It's great to see you again. I had a bit the feeling of Bali where you were teaching to hear the sound, your voice. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could go back to Bali. One day, one day. One day, one day for sure. Well, it's good to see all of you and I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend and a great week ahead of you. The last week we'll be doing this at least. I'm thinking that I want to continue doing it. So at the end, I might send out a little survey to get different opinions from you guys if you're open and I'd love some feedback. So, great, cool. Thank Have you. Thank you. Thank See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.